President, fellows and guests, my name this evening is to introduce you, if you don't already know it, to Castle Lush, from its origin as a principal seat of the Norse kings of Man and the Isles, around 1200, to the revestment of the regalities and customs of Man in the English crown in 1765. These two events perhaps are sufficient to emphasize how detached is the story of man from England, or for that matter, Scotland, Wales, or our good cases across the Irish Sea. But it's not isolated, it's more a cultural confluence than um, cultural isolation. Castle Russian has extraordinary survival of fact, more authentic, top of the bottom, enough. Um, but perversely, there's only occasional documentary references to it before the 15th century, the beginning of the Stanley Lordship, by which time the great medieval building you see on the slides um, was largely complete. So the early narrative depends on reading the fabric against the historical background, with all the uncertainty um, of that it entails. This was done in the context of the conservation trial or next national heritage. Um, a pleasure to work with him. Um, Edward Southworth and um, Steve Blanford are here this evening. The task was hugely helped um, by new survey plans and sections by James Brennan, um, who should be here if he's stuck on a train. Um, oh, sorry, he's here. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, these, as you will see from the level of detail, in this have a lot more to do yet. We're almost only scratching the surface. What I'm going to say tonight is really the result of an interesting process involving many scholars who at least saved me as an interloper in the archaeology of man um, from perhaps my worst gaffes. So to all of you, many thanks. I'm not, of course, the first to study the castle. Um, Building on the work of Henry Oswald, a wonderful, unreliable user of tales, to which we own the date 1011, and in Arabic numerals, um, over the doorway of the top right. Um, but he did observe the conversion to a prison in 1816. More reliable was Armitage Whitney, architect for the Restoration in 1904 to 10, after the prison moved out. Um, under the direction of the island's governor, Lord Raglan, who you see um, sitting among his works on the top left. Um, our fellow Brian O'Neill produced a perceptive paper on Archaeologia back in 1951, much more research in the mid 1980s, of which, unfortunately, only the highly useful excavation by David Creek has ever published. Man was under Scandinavian rule by the late 19th century and variously subject to um, the rulers of the surrounding kingdoms, the ultimate the regions, the kings of Norway. The kingdom of Man and the Isles was one of the volatile Albano Norse and other political entities around the Western Sea Road, um, around the, 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 the Western Isles, and in the Hebrides, on to Shetland and the North beyond. Um, and Godred Kroger, um, King Ori of Max Fogel, conquered the island in 1079. And it's he who founded the dynasty which lasted until the death of King Magnus in 1265 at Castle Russia, the first documentary reference to the place at all in the Chronicles of the Kings of Man. This is the political context of the origins of Castle Russia, as really the later of two principal royalists. The earlier one is at Peel, on the north side of the island, and the island um, divides very much along the north south spine, geographically and indeed um, politically and in its uh, management. Peter Davy and the late Jim Roscoe established that Russia was the name um, of the treaty on which Russian Abbey was founded in 1134 or 1138, depending on which source um, you believe, up here. I came 
King Olaf the First of, um, of, of Man of the Isles, the younger son of John the Crewman, it was found in the water house of the nest. Um, you read Stan By the middle of the 12th century, it was an integral part of the identity of the royal house where its king was buried. Whether or not there was an earlier royal house in the area, we don't know. But Derby Haven, over here, was an important uh, landing place on the south side of the island. Russian was established um, on the opposite side of the mountain, Silver Burn here, on Castle Town Bay, Silver Burn being the river that links the castle and uh, Russian Abbey. Um, and the castle was founded on land directly overlooking the land of the Abbey, which was on this side of the river. All of this within the old parish, the new um, church here. Now the basement and part of the upper floor of the great tower, um, about 60 feet square, um, form the base of the essentially old century keep. And built of rubble, um, nothing of the internal plan um, retained um, in later work. But one can see it in the light red on the elevation and its ruling from here up to the first floor offset. I mean, beyond that corner is a flat corner. Um, and in turn, the rough drawing retained in the later spot. Um, we can now add a single window embrasure, um, but no other actually going to be detailed. It's here, and that's what it looks like um, on the wall. Um, and we've walked up that stair many times before we spotted it. Um, and the north front here faces towards the bird and the heart. Um, the entrance front really has to have been the north front. Um, and probably by a four billion dollars nice violence. Um, the great thing the excavation found and this, this figure, is this ditch here, um, which whose line can be continued because of subsidence in the later masonry building here. It's close to the wall of the tower, um, but further offset on the north. And because it's so close, one assumes that much of the upcuts form the matter, the term matter around the key, possibly a countess of The entrance is on the land side, um, and what we have here is, is fairly clearly, and I think fairly long established, as the basement um, of a great town that had a century ceremonial spaces above, one or two stores. But of course, this doesn't exist in isolation. Um, it needs a bailey with other buildings um, to function as a royal or lordly residence. Um, and the bailey is suggested by boundaries in the 1869 town plan. Up here, characteristic tight ditch, and then gradually slacker, slacker boundaries um, beyond um, reflecting some major structure here. And so, what do we have here? I think arguably a southern gateway to the kingdom of man, in contrast to the ancient defended island fort of Peel on the north side, and looking to England rather than Scandinavia. Arguably a symbol of modernity, clear statement of cultural affinity with England, the Anglo-Norman world, other than the North. But who actually um, initiated this? Wilmaf the first, who founded Russian Abbey, reigned until 1153, is a contender. He spent part of his youth at Henry the first in England. Um, so if Abbey and Castle are part of the same concept from the outset, 
um, that is um, something that comes out of history. And I think culture and resources suggest some rival um, anglicized red woman um, whose sister Africa married John the First, Lord and Conqueror of Ulster, helped him to resist King John, um, was around 1204 regiment with homage to John and recovered the great English favour. The relevance of this apart from the family connections is that the Corsi began Eric Fergus Castle certainly before 1204. And um, the footprint actually of Eric Fergus is slightly smaller than the Russia to Russia. But the sighting, um, as you can see, um, not unfamiliar. So I think the strong, if circumstantial evidence for original town in Russia um, as a center of kingship, justice, administration, um, bad status more than defense. Um, visible, very visible from the sea, uh, a bit like in the castle on a very, very small scale, a metaphor, as it were, to the realm. Now, the last of the Trojan dynasty, Magnus, gave appeal to the northern castle to the church in 1257. And there, the diocese of Sodomensis, um, modern Sodom and Man, um, was established, leaving Russia with the civil war of seat. But we know nothing more beyond those bare facts. What then follows is archaeological evidence of the demise of the past. Um, we've got ragged corners of the upper story incorporated in the freedom um, and clearly packed back to get a, a fair, a, get a sound surface in order to build up this next phase, that one must be against it. But this time formed with blocks of coarse limestone um, coming out of the local limestone deposits on the beach in effect in regular blocks. Um, and so it looks as though the castle was reduced to something not much more than, than the basement story of the offset here. Um, and um, this must be because of uh, events in the interim, as no sign of structural uh, settlement that would have caused it to collapse. Um, and the first thing that was done was to build the keep back for it. So we need a context for a castle falling into um, neglect, pillaging, demolition, and more all. And that's really provided by the death of Magnus in 1265. Um, he left only the legitimate son and was claimed by Alexander in Scotland. Um, Norway accepted that, and the Scots mount, mounted in 1267-75 expeditions against the uh, Manx rebels who disagreed with this. Edward I of England had possession by the uh, late 13th century, and really then there was competing claims to the Manx throne, um, and successive was theoretically grants lordship over its rivals in England. Scotland. In May 1313, um, Robert, Robert the Bruce, um, granted it to the Earl of Moray, um, and then 1316, which is the Mandeville, funded the island, um, and in, finally, um, after the uh, English defeat of the Scots, English defeat of the Scots at Hamilton Hill in 1313, the matter was finally settled and the castle um, was in, in hands and the island. Um, the great event in all of this that is noted is always um, Robert the Bruce's siege in 1313, um, and it's assumed that he slighted the castle. There's no real clear evidence of this. Um, it's been repeated and gained and credence by repetition. But what is clear is that decay, damage, 
smiting of the teeth, um, will, is well reflected in this uh, period of turmoil and uncertainty, also produced in the poignant words. So after the period of response, Edward III recognized that the Montague's right theoretically granted his grandfather to the kingdom of man. Montague was created Earl of Salisbury in 1333, succeeded by his son William IV, who sold man to William the Spirit in 1332. So really only two fingers, father and son, the rest of the same. And really they are responsible for the final rebuilding of the medieval castle. It's complicated, it's undocumented but certainly architectural belongs to that period. Begins with the first steps towards reconstruction. Um, I group it make it rapidly defensible, um, brought to a temporary halt, and some more temporary halts as we go on, um, the purple um, word slide. Um, and to the bases of two towers added um, on the south and west as part of that. Um, <coughs> now these flanking towers um, with a solid base to the um, lowest story were always intended to go higher because certainly the western one has two barbary shafts for the two floors. Um, and the characteristic of this work is these segmental vaults um, with chamfer groups very much um, in vogue in the north from about 1350. Um, and these are also distinctive to the phase. We have these um, window embrasures with seats, um, shoulder windows to doors cover are the same as in the next phase, so there's no great lapse of time. The internal plans. The internal plan is intended to have a tight courtyard. We have um, the scar of the wall here, um, and there it is. Um, and there it cuts back um, in a phase that is different color because we can't actually read it stratigraphically. The earth to the uh, and the addition of these elements. It does seem to be a little piece. And it gives rise in the later building to this sort of misalignment in um, the corner. Um, misalignment at this point, which is clearly reflecting um, an earlier wall this one. Um, and there is the stump of a curtain or mantle of wall coming out of the western uh, tower added here entirely into the visit. And putting that into context, um, we have a surviving fragment here excavated foundation here, and fairly clearly it's going to have an entrance here in the wall that's later rebuilt because of that narrow, that, uh, narrow facet. Um, so we have this mission work which is related to an entrance like the earlier phase on the land side. Now, the influence of Trim Council in Ireland, um, here basically, um, on Council of Russians, we discussed a great deal. Um, and in fact, there is an influence, I think, because turning this one on its age deliberately, one can see the relationship between the whole building entered from the side. The towers, although this one yet added to Russian, um, and this curious little mantle of wall 
um, which is answered here. But this is true in its mid-thirteenth century form. It seems to be at the back of the mind of whoever was doing this um, half a century perhaps um, later. But there's a very different, of course, overall past plan. Substantive rebuilding then um, follows um, major modifications of the internal plan, a bigger courtyard, um, and the realignment of castle entries to the east. This is the big change that happens when they abandon the matrimonial plan. Um, carried forward in stages, modified as it goes, probably begun in the mid 14th century when the Scots and French are increasingly threatened. Um, castle said to be held against the French um, in 1377, but recent scholarship I think suggests that was a bit of propaganda. Um, they began by raising the keep and other story that we carry on the plan, um, adding the East Tower. Um, and all the things that were sealed the previous work. But the internal plan was not foreseeable from the internal work. It involves this radical departure, the length of space, and all the internal structures um, surviving the right of this period. Um, it was halted as a temporary lady moved here, as the spout, as the drain, as the um, Increasing of the lead works, some lead still in it, there's the top of the work of this period, which is just right there. And then, very rapidly on this, despite the lead in wound, the completion of the majority of the keep the space here on the third floor, um, but higher than originally intended, because all of these rooms are reached um, by stairs um, down from the wall walk and the main spiral stop of the wall walk as well. <coughs> I'll come back to how the plan works um, later. Um, most of the openings are plain slits, but um, where not, we have oaky headed capital windows, internal windows, typical details, um, segmental arch fireplaces, an arm and arch of shoulder wintry walls internally, and the arches externally. You can see in this photo how distinctive in the right light and weather conditions the different phases. Um, of the masonry the keep are. Now it's a substantive completion of the keep, attention shifted to a new curtain drawn in the outer wall. Um, and this was anticipated, I think, in that raising of the keep of uh, all heads beyond the original intention. Three phases, um, this one will be finished with a return um, in the butt joint. This one, more ragged, um, but clearly enough difference. Um, but the form detail develops as one goes. Um, one can see um, no projecting buttresses here, and firing platforms on buttresses here, or the towers here. The curtain is formally in scale, and it's complete for all work um, around the double building. This first stage has coal firing platforms here. Um, the second phase has larger firing platforms um, on the solid piers, and with very unusual, arguably perhaps experimental gun ports. Um, above, forward, uh, above the um, forward. The third um, has um, standard gun ports um, of the inverted keyhole um, shape. I 
in towers which have fallen sides now that are flat front. Again, I'm grateful to Malcolm Hislop drawing my attention to um, this being an adaptation of the county Darren meeting around 1370 and 1985. There's a very good example of a standing point here next to this town. Um, there, there's the pile of it located at floor level um, with the door and protective um, wall beyond. And above it, this articulation um, on the, uh, the wall. Um, and of course, the Barbican leads one towards the gatehouse, two changes of direction. Um, so this phase concludes with a three story gatehouse, massive vaulted cellar, um, and entrance passage chambers above. On the first floor, these are hollowed out. But the early plan was more or less the same thus. And in section, one can see that reconstructed spine. The reconstructed spine um, wall here, the original root line, and the 19th century part of the um, The great vault underneath. And the drawbridge pit still survives entered by this round arch. So that when we um, look inside, we've got the, the, the great vault at the lower level, we've got the gatehouse rising originally from the um, rock bank of the silver line. Um, and the um, entrance from the inside here. As to dating, the second phase of the curtain was probably 1360s at the earliest um, from the gun ports. Third stage after 1370, it was all probably completed before the sale of the street in 1392. So then in the final stage of this Massive block of medieval building that seems to belong to school. And that um, is the raising of the gatehouse tower, um, out with windows very similar to the surviving ones of the gatehouse. Um, but internally, quite different from what's below. One large room um, originally separated here by the screen or trust carried on two um, anthropomorphic corbels, now much damaged. This looks like a room um, of such status, um, and its inward courtyard facing windows, intended, I think, for solid tracery at the top, pierced slides below. Um, but clearly, that was never done, and these wonderful lintels were simply built into the fabric. There's no sign of that other than interval here. And also, this provides a link with Scrooge's work at Peel Castle, um, fortified cathedral tower, licensed to Premier in 1392. And this has costumes which appear in this phase of Castle Russia um, for the first time. Now, this raises the question, of course, of how it was used. Um, by the Lord as King of Daniel's residence, Lieutenant Governor, um, or officers were not. Ground floor has purely stores. Um, the light entry is up the stair into this space, often called the hall, but clearly not, because the fenestration implies partitions, as suggested there. Most crucially, there's no fireplace. Actually, I think it works by the progress being into this screen's passage, if you like, up this stair and into this room, which is the hall, which has the best part beyond, which doesn't connect to the other stair, it's entirely private, and ends in a room called the Newman Treasury. Um, which 
chapel is above here, and chapel's room probably here. Um, then there's a second best apartment, plus more level of access to this there. Um, these two rooms, these three rooms, but again, sharing this common service area um, with the kitchen. Here. The, the gatehouse then contains the lesser rooms and the ground room at the top of the gatehouse. There. So we have basically two apartments, um, of which this is clearly the lords or kings of grand apartments is the best one. Really. And just looking at this dressed in the 1980s, um, there's the hall, the fireplace behind the uh, rest high table. Um, there's the room, the principal room beyond, with its fireplace, through the passage, into the treasury or union room, this enormous built-in um, cupboard um, as a private feature. But Castletown didn't have the institutions um, of a barrack. The island was essentially a few years of each day. <coughs> um, nucleated settlements from eight developers. But a township outside the walls is documented by the 1420s. These property boundaries up here, from excavation, are late medieval to about the 16th century. Um, so the southeast, this area, is the obvious location after realigning the house entrance here. The plan of this area was deliberate. Um, and beyond the probable theater in Parma here, um, with the market in its present location, right here, more or less, and St. Mary's Chapel on the face of the plan. And St. Mary's is odd because it's not a round arch in the field. Originally, of two um, orders, the inner chamber. The outer square carried on the form, um, and the, the plaster was hacked off two, three decades ago into the present mess. Um, and the sandstone is exactly like that used in the castle. Here's the little building, here's the um, arches of the aisle. That, that is it. Ignore the dating on the plan. Um, and the similar work. In the north transept here, uh, remains of arches um, into the chapels east and into the body of the church south. Here we are again, called about under the order, and um, in the order lost here at Champs in Paris. So, but when we come back then to um, the castle, of course, we find round chamfered arches again in the 14th century. There's much speculation about the date of the chapel in the Russian Abbey, but my feeling is that they're all really 1370 to 90-ish. Um, one of those spread occurrences of the use of the form. And this really suggests that you want to be cute um, as the best as it were with this. So the castle in this phase really and expresses the actuality of strength as a new toy castle, um, but deploying up to date technology. It's a fairly brutal um, message of lordship um, on what was really, I suppose, like Channel Islands, a form of base defenses against France and their allies. Um, but it's also, of course, expressing the status of our lordship. 15th century, really, when the um, standards take over the, the place, um, the, the, um, the sorry, um, the after Stroop's downfall, very little needs to be done to the castle, very little is done to the next century. Uh, the building here, the new Bailey, and who is visible there, and probably into this 
So moving on to the 16th century, all this came. The castle was updated with the latest military fashion, um, the better to withstand artillery attack. Um, glasses here, um, round tower here survived. The towers on the glasses were gone, probably um, uh, battered to the base of the keep and upgrading the domestic accommodation. Um, I rather agree with O'Neill um, that, that the most likely date of this is around 1540. It um, reflects the English device fortifications of the same period. Um, there's the gateway, a bit toy castle ish. Um, in front of the Cleveland community beach. There is the glasses in relation to the medieval curtain wall. Clearly, the level in this firing point is that more or less at the present moment. First, there's the firing point. There's the glasses as it appears now, of course, a little bit of stone. Um, and we get um, the best view of this probably from the um, Daniel King engraved the drawings of the 1650s. After the Civil War, still showing here the glasses and the first tower, the castle, very much as it still survives. There, moving around to the west side and the larger tower at that end. And there, looking down the marketplace, here, remember, we're, we're a century on, but the difference in the level between here and the outer bailey um, is reflecting the line of the bailey defences by this time. And the round tower, um, essentially two floors down the platform, and presumably related to the fences of earth from the bailey and across the end of the moat. The stair in the wall leads to a block wall comes here um, to the defences of the bailey, so it's still very much functioning at this time. The domestic uh, arrangements suffer a major change here. The keep gets modernised by taking the floor out of this space, the original services, and dropping the, the hall down to that level, in the building the fireplace against the wall, and connecting the floor above. A long gallery in here, and then on the top floor, a railed um, gallery balcony connecting the stair here to this end and the major apartment. This was obviously not very satisfactory, so um, a new Lord's house was built, and last we have a date, 1582 to 3, from the building of this, incorporating some medieval work, much altered, that's the only original window, it's facing the doorway, and extension to the gatehouse here, into the chapel, and the introduction of the clock, I think they didn't mention the clocks, so everyone does. Um, what tradition has it, it came during a, a short period when the initial man reverted to the English crown for the English time. Um, and the recent um, Northern Day that had suggested that um, it is indeed the essence of that date. Um, finally, the Civil War. Final military action. Um, James Stanley, largely resident um, from 1627 as governor, inherited the title in 1642. He'd already left in 1639 to serve the king after dismissing the medical label of history as an attendant of the capital of the island. Um, he returned in 1643 when Christian matters on the mainland decided to revolt. Um, 
he fortified and held round the king on the counties intended um, their property in Lancashire and the arts. Um, and Stanley returned to England and the Prince Rupert's help raised the siege then back to the island where he and the Countess established a kind of court in exile um, with masks, we are told, um, for the diversions. Here we really do have a toy castle for the toy kingdom. Um, but to do so, he had an extra four and a half in our big house, um, all in very basic construction, the remains of the floor of the Buckingham and partitions here. There, um, and a very basic fit out. The western bailey was long abandoned and all off with really rather thin wall. Um, the entrance um, reinforced and a battery built on the outside. The main threat was from the sea The Dane, Daniel King's views are very helpful of this. Um, this one shows the new raised up lodgings best. Um, perhaps they would better remain of the kind of protection of the curtain as the 15th century ones were. Um, the gateway to the Barbican is strengthened. Um, and this peculiar chemise built on the outside, um, perhaps not quite finished. Um, the keeper's an artillery platform um, up here. <coughs> but all did not end well on the side. Stanley left in mid 1651 um, to prevent a royalist insurrection in the north, defeated at Wigan, captured at Worcester, excavated at Executive for treason. The Countess surrendered Russian Parliament in February 1652. Perhaps the last word was the surrender. Meanwhile, Christian had facilitated the parliamentary force landing into our opposition. Um, however, after the restoration, Gaither had been tried for treason um, in January 1663 on the grounds that he had condemned him not apply to the kingdom of man. Christian was pardoned by the Kingdom Council, but too late, as the Earl had already found him guilty of executing <laughs> William Doe um, has forever since been a symbol of nationalism. The Civil War was the last war in action. Um, what followed next was the 1690s, the Lord's lodgings improved, and here, in the age of inventory, we can actually identify um, the rooms um, more or less still um, in the historic form of the um, And this is the attempt to do so, I won't go into detail. But surviving in the building was quite a lot of production molding and paneling. Um, and up on the top floor, where we have um, the Lord's Chamber, the Lord's Dressing Room, the Ladies' Chamber, in the Sanctum, as it were. Um, some very high quality work lost in the 1970s with presidential conversion, but certainly it can be. And it's from this period, really, that we have the earliest plan of the building, signed by one Fane, um, but recently realized that um, the elevation was worked up from this naive sketch, which is in the ranks um, archives. Um, initials IA. Um, presumably for James Athol, um, and the year he inherited madness, the Stanley Air, since. And this must be the original um, of this plan. But by now, um, though still the seat of either law and government, management of the estates, um, the fame plan shows plumbers, carpenters, smith shops in the outer ward, and all these. And here, um, and um, whether it's the video on the screen, poultry. Um, after the investment of 1765, it was first on the 
because of damage to English customs and revenues and the struggling trade, the castle became the attractive property. But that's a story, as it were, for another day. Um, I ended on the Bruce view of 1775, largely because it's in the society's own collections. By this time, the castle was a very popular subject um, for artists. But down to the early 18th century, it's not unreasonable to describe Castle Russia as a fortress palace. Um, initially, it was a small kingdom in the early 14th century, in effect, of an English principality. The lords still referred to themselves as kings, at least until Henry VIII's time, um, when, it, when it seemed um, perhaps unwise to continue. <laughs> um, and the, the balance, of course, between the rooms of fortress and palace um, have shifted over time, but they've both um, always been present. What survives now is a near complete illustration of a medium sized fortress palace, as one can find in the UK, I think, rare enough in Europe. Thank you very much.